If you want to study abroad and English is not your first language, well, you'll need to take an English exam. But which one should you take? There are so many exams available on the market. In this video, I'll go through the popular English exams, we'll see what is the difference, and by the end of this video, you will decide for yourself which one to take. But Yulia, my English is good, why do I need to take an English exam? Well, my friend, if English is not your native language, you'll need to prove that you have sufficient knowledge of English language to study abroad, for example, in Canada. Most of the English exams are pretty much the same. They test four aspects of your knowledge. Reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Some of these exams might be also used for immigration purposes. Colleges and universities will have their own ranking, but generally the level of English you need to study undergraduate or postgraduate is going to be pretty much the same. Universities and colleges will normally give you a minimum score that you need to get into college or university, but you can always get a high score. All good. But Yulia, which exam is easier? I don't want to spend so much time and energy on the preparation. Well, it depends, I think, on you and your level of English. Generally speaking, all the exams are pretty much the same. They all test your English knowledge. There is no such thing as this one is harder, this one is easier. They're all the same. The only difference is the format of the exam. And by the way, did you know that all the tests are valid for two years from the date of the exam in case you need it for any other universities, colleges, or maybe even immigration? You can use the same results of the test. And let's start this video with the most popular English exam, which is IELTS. IELTS is accepted by hundreds thousands of universities and colleges around the world. IELTS exam has two options. The first one is IELTS academic. You will need it for your studies, but there's also IELTS general. This type of IELTS might come in handy if you're planning to apply for immigration. IELTS general is easier than an academic for a reason, because if you're taking an academic exam, it's for your studies. If you're taking a general one, it's for immigration. For immigration, the level needed is lower, so they're not going to test you on academic vocabulary or anything related to the studies. The scores vary from 1 up to 9 with an increment of 0.5, so your score might be 5.5, 7.0, up to 9.0. The duration of the test is around 3 hours. You will have a break before your speaking part, so you can have lunch, get ready, maybe go through your notes. As for the price, it depends on your location because the prices vary from 215 US dollars up to 310 US dollars. There are a lot of materials available for you to prepare for IELTS. If you go on YouTube, if you go on British Council's website, if you literally Google IELTS preparation, there's gonna be a lot of different PDFs, books, materials, platforms like IELTS is the most popular exam, so don't worry, you'll find something to go through and get ready for your exam. Again, if you're aiming for a higher score, it would be better to take a teacher, a tutor. That's what I did because I was like, I don't have time, I need to get like, I don't know, 7.5, 8 in IELTS. So I took private classes. But the thing is, I have masters in languages, so for me it was only the format of the exam. And why IELTS is better than any other exam, first of all, you can take IELTS literally like, I don't know, every week, depending on your location. In Canada, it's literally every week or maybe every two weeks. IELTS is accepted by everyone, like literally any college, any university will accept IELTS. And if you're planning to study in Canada, once you nail the IELTS academic format, you'll need to take IELTS general for your immigration, which means you'll just need to take an exam because you already speak English and you already know the format of the exam. Moving to the next exam, which is TOEFL. TOEFL has two options, IBT, PBT, digital, paper-based. TOEFL is also very popular, but it's mostly for my American students. If you want to study in the US, then TOEFL is your choice. Again, TOEFL is like any other exam, four parts, reading, writing, speaking, listening, like no surprises, no nothing. TOEFL also takes almost three hours with a 10 minute break and the final score will range from 0 to 120, meaning 120 is the maximum. The price is around the same as IELTS, it's from 180 USD up to 300, depending on the location. Again, since TOEFL is a very well-known exam, you can find prep materials literally everywhere, YouTube, 
books, Google, TOEFL's website, over a thousand universities and colleges and over 160 different companies like immigration and stuff except TOEFL. Again, TOEFL is perfect if you want to study in North America, in the UK, anywhere in the world. But the thing is, if let's say you're planning to stay in Canada, Canada does not accept TOEFL for the immigration purposes. If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to like this video and share with your friends. This way I'll know that you love this type of content and I will film you more videos about English exams. Moving to the next test, which is my favorite Duolingo English test. Duolingo changed the whole game for English exams because it's fully online. You can take it from your home, which is amazing. When I was applying for a Canadian college, I had to take IELTS, which is three hours. When I moved to Canada, I had to take IELTS again because I wanted to stay in Canada. Three more hours. Duolingo, one hour from your home, online. Duolingo English test is using an adaptive technology, which means the questions adapt to your knowledge. If the system sees that your level is, let's say, A2, somewhere like beginner slash intermediate, it's not gonna give you C2 questions being like, please give me the answer. No, it's gonna adapt based on your level. Again, the entire test experience is just one hour and the price, you guys, $49. Just gorgeous. Meaning if you failed, if you don't like your results, you can take this test like, I don't know how many more times you want to. And I almost forgot to mention, the results will come in to your email in 48 hours, meaning in two days. As for IELTS and TOEFL, you need to wait for weeks. I remember I waited for like two or three weeks to get my results and I was like, what is this? With Duolingo English test, two days, that's it. Again, all the preparation materials are available on Duolingo English test's website, on YouTube, Teacher Luke, like his channel is all about Duolingo. Many colleges and universities worldwide accept Duolingo English test. On the website, you can find a table that's gonna tell you what is it in Duolingo English test, what is it in IELTS, what is it in TOEFL. So if you're worried about your mark, you can always compare and see what's your mark. Duolingo English test is perfect for anyone who is in a rush. If you need your English exam ASAP, you applied, but for some reason, I don't know, IELTS results are taking forever to get in, you can take a Duolingo English test, get your results in two days, apply, and then if let's say your IELTS is better or your TOEFL is better, you can send those results as well. And moving to the next test, which is CELPIP. CELPIP is a test made specifically for Canada, mostly for immigration, but some colleges and universities also accept CELPIP. I don't think CELPIP is super well known for one reason. There is only this list of countries where you can take this CELPIP test. Meaning, if you are, let's say, like me in Portugal, I can't take this test. CELPIP is also around three hours long and cost around $300, so similar to IELTS, similar to TOEFL. But what is good, this test is made specifically for Canada, specifically for immigration. So if you're planning to immigrate to Canada after your studies, CELPIP might be a good option for you. Again, the results come in in like four or five business days, which is also amazing if you're in a rush, but not really. And by the way, they have a lot of free stuff on their website where you can find webinars, different preparation materials, books, like a lot of things. You can also find some paid materials on the website. By the way, all the links are gonna be in the description box so you can access it super easily. And moving to the next exam, which is PTE. PTE Academic is also aimed at international students who are planning to study, let's say, in the UK. I haven't seen many colleges and universities in Canada who accept PTE, but if you're planning to study in Europe, in the UK, PTE is your choice. There are 20 different types of tasks in the PTE exam. This exam is a bit shorter. It's only two hours, 15 minutes, almost three hours, but not really. The price is similar, $300. And PTE, it's accepted by a lot of universities worldwide, such as Oxford, such as Harvard, such as Yale. So if you want to study in the Ivy League and you are a smart cookie, PTE, PTE. Again, Australia, New Zealand, UK, they accept PTE for immigration purposes. So if you have, let's say, option number one, Canada, option number two, New Zealand, 
might as well just take a PDE exam. Who knows, maybe you end up immigrating there. And the best part about this test is that you can send your scores as often as you'd like to for free. So if you apply into 10 different universities and colleges, just send those results. Of course, there are other tests available for international students, but I feel like these are the major ones. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. That means a lot to me. And I'll see you next week. Bye.